Dying screams of alien Zandarian diplomats were all Ambassador Raxar could think about as the human ship docked with Olympus Station. He had heard the stories. He knew what humans were capable of, the ability to fall unconscious at will, to dream, to forget the waking world for hours each night. It all terrified him to the core of his three beating hearts, but orders were orders. Raxar had a mission, negotiate the trade deal or the Zandarian Empire would starve. Trillions would die. The airlock hissed open. Waiting on the other side was Raxar's human counterpart, Ambassador James Thompson. Muscular, smiling, oozing confidence, a sleeping monster. Welcome to Olympus Station, Ambassador Raxar. Hope your trip was pleasant. Let me show you to your quarters so you can rest up before negotiations begin tomorrow. Raxar gulped, tentacles twitching. He had to swallow the pure, primal fear rising in his throat. For the sake of his species, he had to face down this den of nappers and make the deal happen, even if it meant never sleeping again. The trade negotiations dragged on for hours, the representatives from both sides going back and forth on tariffs, shipping routes, and a thousand other minutiae that threatened to make Raxar's head spin. He forced himself to focus on the task at hand, pushing down the fear that threatened to overwhelm him, every time he looked at the humans seated across the table. But as the talks wore on, Raxar began to notice something strange. Several of the human delegates seemed to be drifting off. Their eyelids fluttered and drooped, their heads nodding forward before jerking back upright. Raxar watched in disbelief as one man's chin sank to his chest, a soft snore escaping his lips. Surely this was some sort of trick, a ploy to catch the Zandarians off guard. Raxar turned to Ambassador Thompson, ready to demand an explanation, but the human diplomat was focused on the trade document in front of him, seemingly oblivious to his slumbering colleagues. Raxar cleared his throat, the sound echoing through the conference room. Ambassador Thompson, I must protest. Your delegates are showing a blatant lack of respect for these proceedings. Falling asleep during such a critical negotiation? It's unheard of. Thompson glanced up, his brow furrowed in confusion. He looked around the table, taking in the dozing humans, and then chuckled. Ah, I apologize, Ambassador Raxa. I should have warned you about this. Humans require regular periods of sleep to function at peak efficiency. These negotiations have been quite intensive, and many of my colleagues are simply exhausted. Raxar sputtered, his tentacles twitching in agitation. But how can they possibly contribute to the talks if they're unconscious? This is absurd. I assure you they are still processing the information on a subconscious level, Thompson said, his tone maddeningly calm. When they wake they'll be fully engaged and ready to continue. In the meantime, why don't we take a short recess? I could use a cup of coffee myself. Raxar wanted to argue, but he could feel his own energy flagging. Perhaps a break wasn't such a bad idea. He nodded stiffly, rising from his seat and striding out of the room, his mind whirling with questions and doubts. As he sipped a cup of bitter Zandarian tea in the station's cafeteria, Raxar couldn't shake the feeling that he was out of his depth. These humans and their bizarre habits were beyond his understanding. How could he hope to negotiate with a species that willingly surrendered consciousness on a regular basis? But he had no choice. The fate of his people rested on the success of these talks. Raxar took a deep breath, steeling himself for the challenges ahead. He would have to find a way to work with these strange, slumbering creatures no matter how much they unsettled him. The future of the Zandarian Empire depended on it, of the Sioux. Raxar paced back and forth in the control room, his tentacles twitching with anxiety. The negotiations were on the cusp of a breakthrough when the alarms blared throughout Olympus Station. He rushed to the security feeds, his hearts pounding as he scanned the screens for any sign of trouble. There in the main conference room, a group of armed Zandarians had the human delegates surrounded. Leading them was a face Raxar recognized all too well. Crax, a notorious extremist who had long opposed any cooperation with the humans. Crax's exoskeleton gleamed under the harsh lights, his mandibles clicking together in a menacing rhythm. Ambassador Raxar, Crax's voice crackled over the comms. 
I see you've noticed our little party. Here's how this is going to work. You're going to cease all negotiations with the humans immediately. You're going to tell them to pack up their bags and get the hell out of our space. If you don't comply, well... He pressed his plasma rifle against Ambassador Thompson's temple. Let's just say things will get messy. Raxar's blood ran cold. He knew Crax was capable of unspeakable violence, and the thought of the human delegates paying the price for his failure was unbearable. He opened a channel to the conference room, his voice shaking slightly as he spoke. Crax, please, there's no need for this. We're so close to an agreement that will benefit both our species. Let the humans go, and we can talk about this. Crax laughed, a harsh grating sound that set Raxar's teeth on edge. Talk. I'm done talking, Raxar. You've been selling out our people to these, these creatures for far too long. It's time to take a stand. Now, are you going to do as I say, or do I have to start putting holes in our guests? Raxar looked at the faces of the human delegates, their expressions ranging from fear to defiance. Ambassador Thompson met his gaze, his eyes calm and steady despite the weapon pressed against his head. Raxar knew he had no choice. All right, Crax, you win. I'll inform the human authorities that the negotiations are over. Just, just don't hurt anyone. Crax's mandibles twitched in a cruel approximation of a smile. I knew you'd see reason, Raxa. Now get to it. And remember, if I see one hint of resistance, the humans die. Raxar cut the comlink, his heart's heavy with defeat. He began to compose a message to the human fleet, his tentacles shaking as he typed out the words that would shatter the fragile peace they had worked so hard to build. But as he glanced back at the security feed, Something caught his eye. Ambassador Thompson, still held at gunpoint by cracks, seemed to be nodding off. His eyelids were drooping, his head lolling forward as if he were about to fall asleep. Raxar blinked, wondering if the stress of the situation was causing him to hallucinate. But no, there was no mistaking it. The human ambassador was on the verge of slumber, even as a plasma rifle threatened to end his life at any moment. A flicker of hope ignited in Raxar's chest. If the humans could remain calm enough to sleep in the face of such danger, perhaps there was still a chance to salvage this mess. He just needed to buy some time to find a way to outsmart Crax and his extremists. Raxar's mind raced as he watched Thompson's eyes flutter closed, the human's chest rising and falling in the slow rhythm of sleep. He didn't understand how the ambassador could surrender to unconsciousness at a time like this, but he couldn't help but admire the man's composure. Taking a deep breath, Raxar turned back to the console, his tentacles flying over the keys as he began to formulate a plan. He would find a way to save the humans and preserve the peace, even if it meant facing down the terror of Crax and his fanatics. The fate of two species hung in the balance, and Raxar refused to let fear be the victor. Crax's eyes blazed with fury as he watched Ambassador Thompson's head droop forward, the human seemingly slipping into unconsciousness despite the plasma rifle pressed against his temple. The Zandarian extremist's mandibles clicked together in a harsh staccato, a sign of his growing agitation. "'Wake up, you pathetic creature!' Crax snarled, his free hand clenching into a fist. You dare to insult me with your lack of attention? Thompson didn't respond, his breathing slow and even as if he were in a deep slumber. Crax's exoskeleton shuddered with rage, and he raised his fist, prepared to strike the human for his insolence. But before the blow could land, Thompson's eyes snapped open, and he moved with a speed and precision that defied belief. In a blur of motion, the human ambassador twisted out of Crax's grasp, his hands locking around the extremist's wrist and wrenching the plasma rifle from his grip. Crax let out a startled hiss, but Thompson was already moving, his body a whirlwind of controlled chaos as he spun and ducked, disarming and incapacitating the other Zandarian extremists with a series of rapid strikes and joint locks. The human delegates who had been held hostage looked on in amazement their eyes wide with disbelief as their once sleeping colleague single-handedly neutralized the threat. Raxar burst into the room moments later, flanked by a squad of Zandarian security forces. 
They skidded to a halt, their weapons raised, only to find the extremists already subdued, groaning on the floor as Thompson stood over them, his chest heaving with exertion. Ambassador Thompson, Raxar exclaimed, his tentacles twitching with a mixture of relief and confusion. What? How did you... Thompson turned to face Raxar, a small smile playing across his lips. Apologies for the deception, Ambassador Raxar. I was merely feigning sleep to lull our captors into a false sense of security. Raxar blinked, his mind struggling to process the human's words. Feigning sleep? But why would you do such a thing? It's a skill that humans have developed over centuries of evolution, Thompson explained, his voice calm and even despite the adrenaline that must have been coursing through his veins. We call it combat sleep. It allows us to remain fully aware of our surroundings while appearing to be unconscious, ready to react to any threat at a moment's notice. Raxar felt a chill run down his spinal column, a primal fear that he couldn't quite shake. The humans, it seemed, were far more than they appeared. Beneath their soft, fleshy exteriors lay a predatory instinct, a cunning that even the most battle-hardened Xandarian could not match. As the security forces hauled Crax and his extremists away, Raxar couldn't help but stare at Thompson, a newfound respect mingling with the terror in his hearts. The human ambassador had single-handedly saved the negotiations and perhaps the future of their two species. But at what cost? Raxar knew that he would never be able to look at the humans the same way again. They were not just strange, slumbering creatures, but formidable allies and potentially deadly adversaries. The revelation left him both awed and unsettled, wondering what other secrets the humans might be hiding behind their sleeping facades. The conference room felt oppressive as Raxar and Thompson sat across from each other, the weight of recent events hanging heavy in the air. Raxar's tentacles twitched, a nervous tick he couldn't seem to control as he looked at the human ambassador, the image of Thompson's lightning-fast movement still fresh in his mind. Ambassador Thompson, Raxar began, his voice strained. I must admit I am still trying to process what I witnessed during the hostage situation. Your ability to feign sleep and then spring into action with such speed and precision, it was both impressive and unsettling. Thompson leaned back in his chair, his expression neutral. I understand your concerns, Ambassador Raxar. The ability to enter combat sleep is not common among humans, and it's not something we advertise freely. Raxar leaned forward, his curiosity piqued despite his unease. But how is such a thing possible, and what are its applications in combat situations? Thompson sighed, running a hand through his hair. It's an adaptation that has allowed our species to survive in hostile environments throughout our history. When faced with danger, some humans have the ability to enter a state of heightened awareness while appearing to be asleep. It allows us to conserve energy and react quickly to threats. Raxar's brow furrowed, his mind racing with the implications of such an ability. And you use this skill often? Only in self-defense, Thompson assured him. We have no intention of using it aggressively against the Zandarians or any other species. It's a last resort, a means of protecting ourselves when all other options have been exhausted. Raxar nodded slowly, some of the tension easing from his shoulders. I appreciate your candor, Ambassador Thompson. It will take some time for me to fully come to terms with this new information, but I am relieved to hear that you do not intend to use this ability to harm my people. Thompson smiled, a genuine expression that seemed to light up his face. Of course not, Ambassador Raxar. We came here to forge a partnership, not to start a war. Now, shall we finalize this trade agreement and put this unpleasantness behind us? Raxar agreed, and the two ambassadors spent the next hour poring over the details of the agreement, making final adjustments and clarifications. As they signed the document and shook hands, Raxar couldn't help but feel a sense of unease lurking beneath the surface of his relief. The humans were a complex and unpredictable species, capable of feats that defied Zandarian understanding. They could sleep and dream, they could enter a state of combat sleep and react with deadly precision. What other secrets did they hold, 
and what would happen if the Zandarians ever found themselves on the wrong side of human interests. As Raxar boarded the shuttle that would take him back to Zandarian space, he couldn't shake the feeling that his people would need to tread carefully in their dealings with humans. The trade agreement was a step in the right direction, but it was only the beginning of what promised to be a long and complicated relationship. Raxar settled into his seat, his mind still reeling from his experiences on Olympus. He knew that he would never be able to look at humans the same way again. They were not just strange, alien creatures, but formidable allies and potential adversaries. The future of Zandarian human relations would depend on the ability of both species to navigate the complexities of their differences and find common ground. As the shuttle lifted off, Raxar closed his eyes, trying to calm his racing thoughts. Sleep would not come easily, not after what he had witnessed. But for now, he could only hope that the fragile peace they had forged would hold, and that the humans would prove to be the allies he so desperately needed them to be. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.